<laughs> How's everybody doing? Listen, I know that I'm still doing reading for the Valentine's Day special at a hundred dollars. You know, a lot of you have called on my Instagram. I got you. I got you. I'm going to extend it until Friday, okay? I spoke to my management team because I had such an overwhelming response. And I do have other teams of astrologers, but a lot of you just want to talk to me. I get it. I get it. I got you. Realize, I got you. I got you. So, I know every single one of you on Instagram and on my uh, Gmail and in my People's Astrologer and my Fernando's Tarot Card consulta uh, uh, consultations on YouTube, on um, Facebook. Don't worry. I got you. Today, we are going to talk about mutable air, Gemini. <laughs> I love talking about Gemini because the ruling planet is Mercury, and Mercury rules Virgo, and I'm a Virgo. See, that's the narcissism in me. It's a chance to talk about myself. <laughs> Not really. No, I, I'm very professional. I'm very professional that way. Today, we're going to talk about the moon in Gemini, the beauty of mutable air, <laughs> and how this is expressed in the human personality and ego. Understand that when we're dealing with the moon in Gemini, we're dealing with movement, changeability, inconsistency. But the joy of everyday living, of the flux of the moment, is all about the moment. With Gemini, it's about the moment. And when the moment is gone, it's gone. Then you look for the experience of the next moment and what that will bring. You have to understand that with the moon in Gemini, as with the sun in Gemini, you have to understand the purpose of the archetype. Gemini is the sign of communication. And communication happens on many levels. Not just the five senses, which is ruled by Virgo. The mercurial, earthy aspect of Gemini, which is Virgo. The intellectual genius of Virgo. Is pulling from the Gemini side of Mercury. Mercury rules both Gemini and Virgo, but the modality of expression is different. You have an air sign and you have an earth sign. So Mercury deals with the intellect. But Mercury is the fastest moving planet in our solar system. It moves 70 times faster than the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so when this little guy goes retrograde, baby, baby, everything becomes haywire. I'm having a call coming through. Hi, how are you? I, I'm uh, okay. I'm in the middle of doing a taping. I'll, I'll be right with you. Uh, I'm just doing a special announcement concerning you. <laughs> and it, oh yes, and it is a surprise. <laughs> so give me about another fifteen minutes. You're going to love this. <laughs> yes, a client just came in because because I'm reading. The part of the Valentine's special, 24-7, you know, I am so happy for the response. So happy for the response. That's what I like to see happen. So again, Mercury rules Virgo and Gemini. And when it comes to Mercury, we're talking about pure intellect. When it comes to both Gemini and Virgo. The expression of this intellect happens in two distinct ways. If we're dealing with Gemini, it's through the flow, the highway, 
of, uh, of information. Think of a highway. Think of I-95 or the New Jersey Turnpike or Florida, you know, any turnpike, whatever state you're in. And the way they mix and they turn like that, right? You have highways that go up, that go down, they go through bridges, they go to ridges. You got tunnels. That's a highway too. It goes underneath the water. All that is ruled by mercury. Mutable air and mutable earth. Highways, corners, crossroads. You know, all the little, the highways, dirt roads, back roads, you know, isolated spots and places. You know, all these things on the earth where well, there's obscurity and a little bit of danger. All fall under Mercury. When it comes to earth, we're dealing with Virgo. When it comes to the intellect and ideas, ideas, we're dealing with Gemini. So, the moon in Gemini is not going to express itself as it does the planet Mercury in the same sign. Understand that the sun is proactive and the moon is reactive. So when the moon is in Gemini, we are looking at a reactive stance of the principle of Gemini and Mercury. So therefore, if the proaction is intellect and the cultivation and dissemination of intellect, when we're dealing with Mercury ruling Gemini, when we're dealing with the moon in Gemini, we're not dealing with that. We are dealing with Expressions of behavior, which can be quixotic behavior, uh, manic depressive behavior, ADD behavior, sporadic schizophrenic behavior. The Gemini moon expresses itself in the personality through its behavior. Through its behavior. And we're not dealing with psychological behavior, which, but then again, when we're dealing with psychological analysis, transpersonal, transactional analysis, as it is known in the uh, service professions, right? We are dealing with the personalities or egos' response to crisis and incoming and outgoing flux of movement and action, both in physical action as it occurs in the environment and also in mental action. Because the moon in Gemini person lives a life of flux. 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 Constantly changing. Never consistent. And this can make the Gemini moon person appear unstable, schizo, unpredictable, and therefore unreliable. But you'll be making a fucked up mistake if you do that. Because a moon in Gemini can be, like in anything in nature, beautiful. But... If you're not at a certain level of evolution to know how to handle these lunar forces, then you're not going to make the right choices. This, these lessons and these evolutions of learning and expressing oneself in the highest degree possible happens over time and over many incarnations. You're just not going to get it right the first time. You have to allow yourself to experience the good and the bad. Gemini rules the duality of nature. And nature is both good and evil. Nature is an expression of both. And you don't see, you see this more pertinent when you're dealing with Gemini. In Gemini, you see this. You see this dichotomy coming into play. Let's break it down. Let's now discuss, you know, because let's go with the, you know, basics, right? Gemini, how do we see this expression in nature? The moon in Gemini. The cold winds of the Arctic. The Santa Ana winds of California. To mention just a few. Okay? Tornadoes! And Tornado Alley and the American Hotline Midwest. Yeah. 
electromagnetic interference and disturbances in our atmosphere, causing our cell phones to malfunction, causing things to be delayed. Mercury retrograde is a perfect example of this phenomenology, which now, thank God, people are taking more seriously than they did when I was a young boy in the 1980s. NASA and uh, uh, astronomy cosmologists have actually proven that Mercury retrograde causes electromagnetic disturbances in our atmosphere. It causes magnetic disturbances in our radio wave telescopes. Our cell phones stop working. Our electronics stop working. The speed of our planet begins to slow down. Another terrifying beauty of nature, which men only have a clue about. <laughs> you know? We as shamans and astrologers have a little edge on the rest of humanity because we understand these terrifying mysteries of nature. So that we are calm while the rest of the population is, ah, we, the wisdom ones, are in silent wisdom. We can We know the deal. It's okay. It's just another expression of nature. And nature has many faces. You don't see this more clearly when you experience the moon in Gemini, which expresses different prisms of that nature, both in our planet, even our creator, right down to our own basic personalities. Gemini represents, you know, accumulation of human experiences. Understand that in the in, in Jacob's ladder, Gemini is the child. Aries is the baby. Uh, Taurus is the goober. I said Uber in my other videos, but I meant goober. And Gemini represents the child. So. The ego is not formed at this level. Remember, the ego becomes alive in Leo, the sign of Leo, the young adult, the teenager. This is in keeping with early childhood development in conventional science. We know that in, in, in the field of social work in conventional sciences and social sciences, the ego is developed around 11, 12, 13. We know this in conventional uh, social sciences. Well, astrology agrees with, the, with social sciences. We come up with the same cycle and the same findings are right at the same point. The ego is born when you are really 13 years old. There's consciousness before then, but the cementation, the supplantation, of that identity occurs around age 13, 14, 15. This is Leo, the emerging personality, identity. You are separate from your father. You are separate from your mother, from your brothers, from your neighborhoods, from your friends. You come into this world with a uniqueness only attribu attributable to you. And this is the principle of Leo. That doesn't begin to born until around age 13, 14, 15. What we call early childhood development. In this, I gotta, I gotta say, the scientists, the social scientists are correct in this. Yes, they're correct in this. That's the natural order of human gestation and early childhood and human development. Astrologers, we have our own formula, but it parallels with science. A rarity. A rarity. But in this, we agree. So, in Gemini, we're not at the ego level yet. There's still a lot of immaturity, a lot of reactive behavior instead of pro-thinking behavior or, 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 or actions or consequences of behaviors that are promulgated by logical thinking and linear logical fellowship. That doesn't happen in Gemini. That happens in Virgo. When we leave the teenage years of Leo and enter Virgo, which is the sign of adulthood. By that time, we are age 30, and we are reaching adulteration. 
understand, guys and gals, the psychological process of human development. If you understand that, you got to take some classes in psychology or social work, human development, human psychology, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Astrology doesn't interfere with that. It exonerates that. Actually, it uplifts that. We agree with conventional social scientists. This is the approach to understanding the gestation of human development. And therefore, what will follow after that? We call this in social sciences the formative years. The growing pains. Pre-adolescence and then adolescence. That falls under Gemini. So Gemini represents a phase in your life where there is discovery. You are discovering things. You are discovering yourself, the environment, and anything and everything around you. It is a flower sprouting. That's Gemini. You don't know what that flower is. You don't know what that species is until it sprouts. And then when you see it, you're like, oh, that is the beauty of the moon in Gemini. I got to re-up. You all know me. I got to re-up. And I just got started. Thank you so much for waiting for me. I get away with it because it's you guys. If you don't like me guys doing that, let me know and I'll stop doing it. Because every second counts. I know. And I hate to be off the air even for a second. Well, you know me. Come on. I have a little of that narcissism going on. You know? <laughs> At least I own it. <laughs> because I want you to own your own shit too. I own my shit. And if we are going to ever evolve as human beings to be better people, we need to own our shit. We need to own our shit. You know? And talking about owning shit, now let's talk a little bit about the Gemini moon liabilities in which only your shit is one of them. Gem Moon and Gemini people don't like to take ownership for their shit. What the fuck is up with that? They justify everything. Like Libra. You can never win with Libra. Because they have an intellectual discourse for everything they do. And just for everything they do. You can't win with the motherfuckers. I'm mad at them. It's a cardinal sign. So it's always going to win. So when we come, so so when we're dealing with um, Gemini, <laughs> see Gemini can be just as clever as Libra. <clears throat> Libra has an arrogance of intellectualism that they feel that with the power of the intellect, it can transcend even morally any actions that they take, and that's the danger. That's what makes this sign so dangerous. With Gemini, there is true innocence. Gemini is the third in the wheel. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. Libra is number seven. It's past personal development and self-knowledge and going into the not seven to others. That's why I'm very hard on Libra. Because Libra knows the deal. No. Whatever morality it chooses, it's its own choice in its making. But I'm not so hard with Gemini. Gemini is still young in the human evolution and still has a lot to learn. So we could be a little bit more forgiving with Gemini than we can be with Libra. Although Libra will be held 
to a higher standard than Gemini. But that's okay. Libra, as a cardinal sign, should be held to a higher standard. And she or he does it very well, in spite of him or herself. So we're dealing with a lower evolved nature of the sign. But when we're dealing with Gemini and the Gemini moon, we forgive the goober, the child. Gemini is so... <coughs> I'm Virgo. I'm ruled by both Mercury, Mercury, which was Gemini. So I'm going to be very biased. Now, I don't have a problem with Gemini. And let me tell you, Gemini can be demonic. Ooh, ooh. But so can Virgo. So can Virgo. <laughs> so we're good. We're good. No apologies. Gemini is his own or her own law of being. So if you're dealing with a higher evolved nature, moon in Gemini, this person will be very embracing of everybody and very embracing of philosophies of others. Will make room <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. <coughs> the bad part is the, is the spasm that comes with it. Okay. Let me tell you. With Gemini, it's all good. Gemini doesn't hold grudges. The Gemini moon. Now, the sun sign Gemini does hold the grudge. But the moon in Gemini doesn't hold the grudge. They react. And then it's over. And then they move forward. The moon in Gemini represents our weather patterns. One day it's raining... And at that same, an hour, an hour, if you're living in the tropics, or you visit the, 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 the tropics, you have moments in the day where it's raining, and then it's, and then it's sunny. And then you have moments when it's sunny, but raining at the same time. Have you ever experienced that? If you've lived or, or visited the tropics. It happened to a certain degree in the southern region of the United States, like Lower California, Baja California, or Florida, a very tropical place. You see the 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 the, the law of Gemini in nature is raining. When I was in South Beach last year, every hour or every forty five minutes, we we had to go indoors because. Then you can see the storm coming from the Florida Keys. And then it was raining, and then it gets cloudy, it gets omnibus. And then the next moment, the sun comes out. And it's pretty, and the sailing come out. Ah, ah, ah. That's Gemini. Mutable earth, mutable air. The changing weather patterns. You don't know if it's going to rain, or if it's going to be sunny, or if it's going to be damp, or if relative humidity. How do you do your hair? How do you do your makeup? What are you going to wear? We have to look at the atmosphere and the temperature because it's constantly changing. This is the principle par excellence of the moon in Gemini. So we see this expression in nature in each individual human personality. Okay? So... When we break, when we break it down on a more mundane level, <coughs> how do you deal with a moon in Gemini person? Both the Gemini woman or the the, the moon in Gemini woman or the moon in Gemini man, because they're both distinctly different. Distinctly different. So, we have to start then with the basic principles of Gemini, which is versatility, 
and the moon, which is inconsistency. And what that means, oh, but, oh I can't do it because we just ran out of time.